Next tonight, environmental campaigners claim more than 70 locations in the East Midlands have recorded levels of nitrogen dioxide that are harmful to health. Doesn't sound good, but what exactly is nitrogen dioxide? Well, it's a gas which is released into the atmosphere from petrol and diesel vehicles, central heating systems and power stations. It can affect our health by causing breathing difficulties and making life worse for asthma sufferers. It can even shorten the lives of people with lung and heart conditions. Nitrogen dioxide does that by inflaming people's airways. There's a chemical reaction when it's breathed in. Despite cars getting cleaner, it is the pollution caused by traffic that's the main focus of a new report. Simon Ward's got the worst hotspots. The Kingsway stretch of the A38 in Derby has the highest levels of nitrogen dioxide in the East Midlands, according to Friends of the Earth. The group used local authority data to compile a list of areas they say breach annual objectives for pollution levels. We need to tackle um, all emissions, all climate change emissions. The transport is a sector that hasn't, its emissions have barely gone down uh, in comparison to other sectors. So we, we actually need to cut traffic levels as well, and we can do that. Um, we, we can make um, cars cleaner as well through uh, introducing electric cars, but we do need to cut the amount of traffic um, by imp vastly improving public transport, which is not up to scratch in this country. With the A38 in Derby topping the list, the Pegasus crossing at Timwhistle in High Peak comes in second for nitrogen dioxide levels, and the M1 bridge at Coptoke in Leicestershire is at third. The government says nitrogen dioxide levels are down 29% in the UK since 2010 due to cleaner air policies, and it's making funds available to councils and businesses to reduce pollution further. Simon Ward, BBC East Midlands Today. And with us now is a leading expert on air quality, Professor Paul Monks from the University of Leicester. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good evening. I mean, is this a public health emergency? Well, it's a really serious issue. I mean, NO2 has turned out to be a really persistent menace in air quality. Its levels nearly not reducing quickly enough uh, to reduce its health impact. Mm. Some people, as we sort of alluded to, are more prone than others. It can be really serious for some. Yeah, particularly children and old people, anybody with uh, lung infections and, and things like that. Also, little known fact around allergies, also people with allergies, NO2 pollution can exacerbate those allergies as well. So we need a solution. I mean, is it electric cars? Is it public transport? What, what do you think? Well, absolutely. It's a mixture of things. And I think that's the problem with air quality. It's not one single thing that sorts it out. We need to bike more and use active transport. We need to use buses. We need to move to things like electric cars. Uh, but also we need to do that rapidly because I think that the challenge is how quickly can we do these things? <laughs> Yes, um, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, time, time scale is very important because some of these changes, they could take a decade or two to actually come in, couldn't they? Yes, I mean, the government has promised to phase out diesels uh, and, and petrol cars by 2040. But, of course, we've got to put the infrastructure in for electric vehicles uh, as well. So there is, a, there is a rush. And I think the campaigners are saying, you know, how many lives, in inverted commas, are you prepared to lose while you drive down the levels of things like NO2? Right. Well, fingers crossed it does get sorted, but uh, for now, Professor Paul Monks, thank you very much indeed. Yep, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.